Hallelujah. So we've got another testimony. These are going to zoom in with us from England, but uh, we've got a little video here that we'll play introducing Richard and uh, Jacqueline uh, Waller. back was terrible, went to see all the specialists, went to see the doctors, spent a lot of money, a lot of time having everything done that they could possibly do to my spine. They discovered I had spina bifida, I had a deformed base to my spine. I got worse and worse and worse. I was taking diazepam daily, uh, cocodamol daily, Voltarol daily, and anything else I could get down my neck. The medical profession had said to me, you're going to be in a wheelchair by the time you're 40. Your knees are a mess. All this is going on, and then I woke up and I had this mad heart situation going on. My heart was just pounding out of my chest. Subsequently, it turned out that I had a condition called atrial fibrillation. So now I'm on more medication, so I'm taking the medication for my back. I'm now taking warfarin to thin my blood so I don't get a blood clot, which will kill me. So I carried on popping pills and believing what they said, going to church, people praying for me. And in the end, to be perfectly honest, I started shying away from people praying for me. And I even stopped praying for myself because I thought, well, if this is God's will, why am I praying to God to stop it? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome via live stream, Richard Waller. Praise the Lord. Great to see you all. Praise God. So are you zooming in from London? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we're just outside of London. We're in the, the, the bit that's, uh, that's nice and green, just south of London. <laughs> all right. So, Richard, uh, you, you become a good friend. I hope I haven't insulted you, but I, and I hope I haven't misrepresented it. Were you a Chippendale? I think you had your own Playboy channel. Give us a little bit of background here. <laughs> well, it's not an insult, but whenever you say that, I always feel the need to, to breathe in a bit <laughs> and, and maybe get some photographs to show that I was actually that. <laughs> it was a long was time ago. It was a long time ago. But yeah, I was. Um, um, I, I started out working at, uh, on the door doing nightclub security, and through that, I ended up getting an agent, and uh, I started being a stripper, um, uh, doing head nights and whatnot, and then ended up in this this um, London nights. This uh, this they called it male review show. But it's basically a bunch of guys, you know, dancing around and taking their clothes off. Amen. So, um, uh, amen means so be it. I'm not sure yeah. that I would say amen to that one. Well, that's 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 what it is. At the end of the day, you can uh -huh. you can call it whatever you like. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a bunch of fellas running around um, dancing. And um, so, yeah, through that and um, one thing leading to another, yeah, I did have my own um, show on Playboy TV. Um, which I was the, the star of. So, um, yeah, but I, 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 I think enough one. said about that. I missed but, that. Yeah, I don't think... I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you didn't miss much. <laughs> So, Jackie, you are a blessing, too, and your daughter, I've got to know all of you, and uh, man, it is a miracle what God has done. Not only your healing, but pastoring a church and now ministering to other people. What a great testimony. So we want to leave some time to talk about that, but also I would like you to give a little background about uh, how did you get all of these problems? I, I remember uh, the way you hurt your back. Just tell us a little bit about how all this took place. Well, I was um, happily going along prior to being a Christian, um, just in, enjoying life, no physical issues um, whatsoever that I knew of. And, um, and then uh, I met Jacqueline. We, we fell in love. Um, I think I fell in love first. <laughs> um, but yeah, we fell in love. Um, we uh, and then a few a few weeks basically into into our relationship being being um, 
being what it was, um, I injured my my spine. Um, that was due to to, to my um, my dad um, uh, was unconscious in his in his apartment, and I w- I was called by my grandmother. She said she couldn't get hold of my dad, so I went round, kicked the door down, which looks really easy on the movies, right? <laughs> it's it's not. It really hurts, man. You, you've got to, you've really got to kick that thing something something hard. So I went through the door, found my dad on the floor. I, I put out the the pan that was that was uh, burning on the stove, and uh, I, I went to pick my dad up. My dad was about nineteen stone. I don't know what that is in pounds, but it is many 13, many pounds. Thirteen times nineteen, whatever that is. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> I'm no good at maths. It's a bunch. Um, but, yeah, it's a bunch. He's a heavy dude. So I, I, I went to pick him up off the floor and just just I felt my spine go. And the next morning I woke up and I just couldn't walk. I was um, in, in a lot of pain. And that, that what that was, that was a prolapsed disc. It was a severely prolapsed disc, apparently. I, I mean, I don't know how you can have an unsevely one or a severely <laughs> one, but I had a, a severely prolapsed disc to the point that it was displaced. Um, which meant that this was sticking out. Um, and over time, um, that disc degenerated to where it wasn't there. So the, the vertebrae were rubbing together in my spine. The, the nerves were all trapped in there. So I was constantly with, with pain. Um, I, I changed my, my career. And then a little while later, I was, uh, um, I was at a, uh, a yard picking up some materials and uh, I, my back went again. I, picked up some heavy containers and my back went mm. and I ended up with another prolapse disc. So I had L3 and L5, both the discs were prolapsed. And over time they discovered that um, uh, I had a, a, an issue with my spine where the spine was crumbling. I had two sections of my spine that were rubbing together. So I was in constant pain with that. Um, hence why I got, um, I got hooked on the painkillers and they were giving me um, tramadol which, you know, I don't know the exact amounts that you're supposed to take, but it definitely isn't um, four, four a day. I think you're supposed to take no more than four a day for more than eight days. Mm. And I was taking four to eight a day for eight years. Wow. Um, that's a, that's, an, that's an, uh, it's an opiate as well, so it has an effect on you mentally and, and other ways. Um, but I was still still um, doing what I was supposed to do, still working and functioning, but I was in constant pain. I was having paying a lot of money to have everything that could possibly be done to my spine. Um, I had facet joint injections where they, they, they have like a live screen and they inject into your spine, which is oh. just horrific. Um, uh, thank you. Jesus, I'm healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time I talk about it, I've got no, I tell you what. <laughs> It's funny, when we did the interview and I, I spent a day talking about the, the sickness and everything, and, and that's just like a different guy. That's just like a dude that I know a story about. And I'm so far removed from that man, that man who lived in pain and, and suffering and, and just we used to plan our days around my pain. Yeah. We would plan our days. Uh, my, I had to wear a body corset every day, um, which was good because it, it makes you look quite slim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's about all. No, so I had to, to wear this body corset, and you know, everything we did revolved around me being handicapped, basically. Yeah. And, and, and anyone who has had a long term physical condition will relate to that. Everything you do, the moment you wake up in the morning, you are deliberated, you, you think sick, you are sick, you do everything uh, you know, carefully, structured. Um, you can't bend down to put your, your socks on without thinking about it. Everything I had to crawl out of bed, roll out of bed onto my front, get down onto my knees and push myself up. It would take me five minutes to get out of bed every day, every single day. And I'd have to go through this routine, taking my pills, getting myself physically ready to to take on the day, put my nice corset on, which sounds weird, right? But it it wasn't like a lady corset. This was the man corset. (laughs) Uh, so uh, Jacqueline, and, um, let me let me ask you, Jacqueline, how did this affect you and your daughter? I mean, it's bound to have affected the entire family. Okay, so it was uh, horrible because every day that we tried to do something, it didn't go the way we planned. 
Um, it involved Richard having to find somewhere to lie down often. Uh, we were going to church. Um, you, you couldn't pick Erin up, could you? Oh, it, Richard couldn't pick Erin up very often, but, you know, the, the, the sitting on his shoulders couldn't happen for very long. I mean, bless him, you know, he, 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 he really soldiered on, he really battled. He, he'd still get up and go to work, and uh, I'd, I'd generally get a phone call to say he was lying on the floor uh, with a crutch pointing at all the bits of... Uh, building work that needed to be doing. You had a very lovely man helping mm. you back in those days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kirk. Kirk, that's it. And and that would be it. I'd get a phone call to say to see how terrible it was. And uh yeah, it was pretty grim. It was grim. It was it was horrible. And then a bit later on the heart thing happened. The the atrial fibrillation yeah. kicked in and I'm finding myself in the hospital with my husband all wired up. Um, I remember the first time it happened, my daughter had gone to one of her first parties. I think she was six or nearly six. And, you know, I I didn't know uh, if she was going to still have a dad when she came out of the party. So it was it was awful. It was grim. Mm. And, you know, it was it was hard when we were being told at church that it was because Richard had had such a wild past. And, you know, this was God's way of. Uh, keeping him focused on oh, God. Wow, the religion was telling you that this was like God's yeah. punishment. I didn't or believe it. I, I never believed discipline. that. That, yeah. was, that wasn't the, the Jesus I was reading about. Amen. Praise God. So many people blaming uh, blaming my condition on God. Yeah, uh, letting the devil off. Yeah, yeah, and, and saying things like, "Well, you know, God loves you so much that He he's, He wants you to stay focused on Him." Yeah, people in church. You can't Certainly really that. focus on that amount. You can't of focus pancakes. on it. So, so you know the, the the classic one. This is um, God's thorn in the in the flesh. This is like Paul's thorn in the flesh. This is yeah. this is him. Just this is because he wants you to 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 not turn back to your old ways and stay focused on him. And and the thing is, I'd had a real a real close experience with God when I when I had got born again prior to this. So. So, yeah, basically, I got born again. Sorry, just to read one, I got born again. Well, and yeah, that's family. nice to know that you are no longer doing that stripping and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Richard's uh, uh, born again experience was pretty massive uh, to the point of God took hold of his spine and shook him. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So even, even, though, even though you had this dramatic encounter with the Lord, I didn't just automatically produce healing in your body. Well, no, because uh, you got born again. Um, it was before we were married. Um, sorry, I'm banging the table. <laughs> we got married. Uh, we got married in 1999, and he already had some back issues. They were just issues. Uh, I remember getting a phone call once to say that he was being picked up by a forklift truck and put in the back of his van and someone else was driving the van home so wow. there were some issues but it was you know again the, the experience in, in his but yes I, I, flat, I, but I, i've gotten born again and it was literally two months later that, yeah. that my that this issue had with my dad so um i sort of got born again had an amazing amazing encounter with god it was just off the scale it was a real kind of upper room experience i, I was at a uh, um, an alpha away day and, and they, they, they asked the Holy Spirit to, to come and pay a visit and uh, I asked the Holy Spirit to, to pay me a visit and he did hallelujah yeah. and then uh, I didn't know what to do with that experience you know I, 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 I found out that God was, was a reality I found out that Jesus really was his son and that everything that Jesus did on the cross actually meant something which is true we just didn't hear about the full package didn't hear about the yeah 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 about the healing it's like God loves you so much but he's going to make you sick if he, if he really loves you yeah you know it was it was it was crazy yeah, it, it we kind of so, kept your arm's length from wanting to get to know God better. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is, is um, because I knew that God existed, I just accepted that, that the people that I was speaking to knew more than me because yeah. I, I was green, man. I didn't know a thing, but I knew there was the, the, that God existed. I knew that, that Jesus was a reality, but I didn't not really know anything else at all. So whatever they told me, I just kind of accepted, and that's... 
that can be an issue right there. You know, you know, you can't don't just let other people tell you about who God is. Yeah. It's a personal yeah. relationship. It's a personal I remember he loves us personally. I remember the very first time you came to the Royal National, I think, wasn't it, in London, where I was holding the a meeting. International Hotel. International. And I remember you being there. But how did you connect with my ministry that you even came to that meeting? How, how did you make that connection? Okay, so so that, that happened. Uh, that was um, God TV. God TV popped up on our television. Yeah, we hadn't subscribed to a, God TV. That was a miracle. It was uh, the end of 2007. God TV just appeared. It wasn't even on our package. <laughs> it just, just appeared. We hadn't even paid for it. We didn't even pay for it. It was free. Amen. And then it was free. God TV turned up. So at the time, we were going to a local church, and, and we were told by our local church, lovely people, but we were told by our local church that, that uh, you know, Americans, but, you know, the evangelists were the devil. And so, you know, they they Just wanted your money. Yeah, so so <laughs> uh, I think I, I tuned in to watch Joyce Myers, because I knew Joyce Myers, because I'd heard her on the radio. I didn't know anybody, uh, and I'd, I'd heard of Joyce Myers and all that Joyce Myers. So I, I went to put her on, and you were on, and uh, was just about to switch it off because I thought, "Oh, he's very American." This very is that American, accent. Very American. So I'm just sure. about to switch you off, and and there was some scripture came up on the screen, and you started to talk about it. I, I think it was somewhere in First or Second Corinthians, so. <laughs> and uh, and I'm looking at it in my Bible, and yeah, that's what it says. And you started to talk about it, and and I was hooked. The Holy Spirit just just was like came alive on the inside of me, and that was it. I was hooked. So every day I would go downstairs, sit in front of the telly, hopefully for the God Channel to be on. And I, I didn't know your name, I didn't know who you were, and I would just sit there at the same time and just pray that that would come back on again. Wow. The program would come on, and, and I just started being there. I think it was before. Uh, Erin was getting ready for school, or maybe she was getting ready for. She was probably old enough to morning. get ready for school by herself. Seven thirty. Yeah. yeah. So, so I would just sit, even sit in the same position just to make sure that you came on. <laughs> uh, and I was just hearing the word every day, every day, every day, hearing the word, reading it, uh, and seeing, yep, that's what it says. That's what it says. So um, I'll put my Bible here so I don't keep hitting the table. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and then one day Richard came home. I, I, I think, I believe at the time I was listening to Lessons from Elijah. And then I, I can't, I don't remember, it was a long time ago. So I, I was listening to that, I was hooked on that. I, I ordered the, the uh, CD. I was playing that all the time in the car. Um, so that's 2008. Yeah, yeah, the next one was Effort Was Change. That really blessed me. And and then uh, the 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 next one I think was God wants you well. Um, I'd never heard that before. Hmm. I'd never heard someone. It's Jacqueline told me you to watch say, it. Yeah, she said, said you got to listen to this guy. He knows what he's talking about, and you're going to get healed. So that yeah. was it. With that, they, okay. they were my words. You will get healed. Get healed. So I was listening, and and we were like, well, we need to, we need to, you know, we need to see this dude, find out more about him. So I went online, and it turned out. Uh, a couple of months later, you were, you were going to be well, at the International Hotel. Yeah, so March, March, April 2008, you were going to be at the International Hotel. Now, bear in mind, we'd never been to anything other than an Anglican church service, or I'd been to some Catholic church services as a kid. And free church. And, and, and free church and whatnot. But um, it's funny, they're all free, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so... Uh, and so was this. And so, it, it, yeah, we thought, man, this... We, yeah, we got in touch, found out you're going to be there, and thought, well, we need to buy a ticket, and that was free. So straight was away, you'd you'd you'd, uh, you'd countered what everyone had told us about um, American yeah. preachers that they just wanted money. So it was a free thing. We didn't even know you were going to be there for for a few days. We, we didn't know it was a free day. No, we, so we just turned up. We on just the Friday, turned up. It to be the same message Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, you were just going to do. But, but, so, you know, I happen to got, remember. We what we came for. I happen to remember what I was preaching at that meeting because I was preaching verse by verse through the book of Hebrews. And when I got yeah. to Hebrews chapter 7, I was talking about Melchizedek and stuff, and everybody was looking at me strange, and I said, are you all getting this? And Charlie LeBlanc, who was the praise and worship leader, goes, no. I remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. It, that was it was funny. just, it was not connecting, but that's the <laughs> yeah. service that you were at. What happened at that's that right. service? 
Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. It, it was fantastic. See, you know, you you got up and you, you, you preached the word, man. That's all it took. You got up and you preached the word. And I was I was listening. The first thing you said is, who, who's come tonight expecting God to move? And we all went, yeah. <laughs> and, the and then you went, you're too late. <laughs> he already did that 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And we were like, huh? Yeah. What? But man, you hooked us, and we were listening, and, yeah, and that yeah. was that was what it needed. I need, you know, every now and again, I need a slap around the face, and and you did it to me in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah, Amen. Uh, and and it, it caught my attention, and and we 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 just listened, and at the end, I mean, we'd never been to an altar call, man. No, we'd never seen. We that. didn't even know what that was. No. When you said, you know, so we're going to get, we're going to, you know, we're going to. When, get when you said, and, is anyone here sick? Come, come forward. I mean, Richard was up and out of his chair the quickest I've ever seen him move in years. And I, my jaw just dropped and I just sat and, and, and was just there in expectation of, wow, yeah. is this, is this going to be it? Is it going to happen? It had been eight years of, of watching him suffer. Yeah, at that point, yeah, it was eight years. And I had done... Um, and the whole thing had been... Had the atrial fibrillation, also yeah. had arthritis in my knees. So the doctors have yeah, basically said, look, you, 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 um, you're going to have to give up your work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and find something else to do um, because we it's can't do anything mortgage. with your spine, your knees. I can't do anything with your, with your knees. Your heart, we're probably going to have to fit a pacemaker. They were going to put an implant in my back, um, which was back then was, was quite a new, um, a new operation. Um, and, yeah, I was in, in a mess. And so we, I turned up there that day. I had my corset on. I had my crutches in the car. And you, you, you preached the word. You told us that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. I heard the word. I believed it. And then I got up to get prayed um, with um, by you. And I stood in the queue. And uh, you had you got the, the prayer um, team up. And uh, I came up and I was like next in the queue. And then this usher came. I could see you were like, I know it, this is weird because we're on a screen. But you were literally... 10 feet in front of me. You were right there in front of me. I thought, there's my man. Here we go. And the usher came up and said, okay, you, if you can just go down the end of the line. I'm like, what? But obviously being British, we like to queue and we do as we're told. So if someone says move that way, we go, oh, okay, then I'll move that way. And I walked down the line and it was Charlie. It was Charlie LeBlanc that that prayed with me. Now, you'd actually said in that meeting, now, I attributed this, this to, to Charlie once, but you actually said, um, you know, you're not going to dim the lights in heaven by asking too much, um, which was a good word, man. <laughs> so a lot of people would think, you know, oh, can I ask for two things? Well, I had three things to ask for. <laughs> so I was like, I'm, I'm glad you'd said that. And I went up to Charlie and I said, well, look, I've got the... I've got the atrial fibrillation. I've got the crumbling spine thing. I've got the arthritis in my knees. And he, he just said, that's not a problem for God. And he put his hand on the shoulder and he's, you know, Father, we agree and we believe and we receive. And we're calling all this done in the name of Jesus. And we said, amen. And straight away, it was amazing. Nothing happened. <laughs> um, but I tell you what, I chair. was excited. I was so excited because I believed every word that yeah. you'd said. And I believed beyond what I felt, beyond what I could, could beyond my, what my body was telling. I was just, I was so excited. When he came back to the chair, I said, well, he said, I'm healed. And I was like, is the pain gone? He went, no. I said, okay. I thought, I'm just going to close this. I knew enough to shut this up not yeah, say anything yeah. yeah my back because we, i've been we, sitting we, down we, my... we both knew it happened we were we were bobsmacked yeah we actually we went were... we, we we went and did um we did uh, a, a large communion together immediately afterwards <laughs> in the um hotel bar and sam had a glass of, of red wine just looking at each other going what just happened yeah honestly dude it was like yeah. we have never experienced anything like that at all it was like what just happened I said, I don't know I what happened, but I'm excited. Home. I don't remember getting home after that. No, no, no. But we came home, and I, I, used, to have, I used to have to sleep with um, pillows either side of me. I had to sleep on my back. If I went on my side or my front, I wouldn't be able to walk the next day because my hips would spasm. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was constant for eight years. Um, and that, that, I went to bed, put the pillows either side of me, and the next morning I woke up on my side. And I, 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 if, you know, 
if I woke up on my side, I wasn't going to walk. It was as simple as that. And I remember that I woke up, saw him on his side, and thought, oh, you know, this is, this is not going to be good. That was, the, that was you get used to thinking sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just, I got up, and sat I up. sat up out of bed, I stood up, I moved my hips around, I bent my legs, my legs, my knees used to crack and be all swollen up, my knees were all swollen every day, and there was nothing. I was completely right. healed. Utterly I actually healed. saw that miracle that day. He actually sat up and got out of bed like a normal person. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank Praise you, Lord. Lord. And, you know, so I, I, that, it, it comes from hearing the word and believing the word. We are so thankful to There's, there's no you. trick to it. You know, there's, there's, yeah. there is no trick to it. There's no magic trick to it. You know, people, people that I've, I've told my testimony to, they would prefer that I told them that there was some magic tree that you went and walked around three times and hugged it <laughs> for your healing. If you tell them it's the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they're like, oh, oh can't it be something else? Can't it be something more exciting than that? It, it, it is that Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is our healer. And so give Jesus. us, praise the Lord, give us a quick update on now you're pastoring a church. How do you go from being yeah, a... I'll tell you what, well, the next best thing that happened is we were at a Grace and Faith Well, this is, this is what happened. It was, it, we, we went to Grace and Faith. It was 2010. And uh, we saw Charlie, told him the whole deal. And he was gobsmacked. We met with Stephen. And then um, you asked me to get up on, on stage and give my testimony. Did a little mini testimony so, that was filmed. Yeah, before. I think it's the least I've ever spoken. <laughs> um, I, 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 <laughs> and I got up and, and gave my testimony. And we came and I came back, sat down, and, and the dude in front of me turned around and he went, that was an awesome testimony, man. You need to meet our pastor. I was like, oh, awesome. And then the guy to my left, he went, that was an awesome testimony, man. You need to meet our pastor. I was like, Oh, okay, right, right. And the guy behind tapped me on the shoulder. He went, that was an awesome testimony, man. You should meet our pastor. I said, where's your pastor? And he pointed at a dude kneeling down in the aisle, just worshipping God. He went, that's Praise our Lord. pastor, Benjamin Conway. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And um, Great man. I said, okay, well, okay. <laughs> I thought, oh, no, look, he's one of them. He's actually kneeling on the ground in public, worshipping God. <laughs> he's one of those fanatics. And uh, praise God for fanatics. Hallelujah. And um, so went over, introduced myself to him. He asked me to come and give my testimony at a men's breakfast. So went round. Because Ben had just started his... He just started Tree of Life Church in Dagenham. So, so we were looking for a, a, a church because obviously... Uh, we'd, we'd gone back to church, gone back to the church we were at before and told them that I was healed. Yeah. And um, I actually spoke to one of the, the leaders at the church. I went, man, I'm completely healed. I went to this see this dude and prayed in the name of Jesus and I'm completely healed and he actually went shh just just don't say it too loud because Mary over there she's been in the wheelchair for years and if she hears that you've got that's just gonna, gonna not be yeah. good for her but I'm we, like man if she heard I got healed that'd be great for her amen people <laughs> would be a lot more excited than they were so so yeah we lost a lot of friends because I got healed <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I yeah, but um, yeah, so so we were still we were looking for for a church, um, and so we found out that um, Benjamin Conway had started a, a, a church, a Tree Life Church in Dagenham, and well, that's 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 good enough. enough. Forty five minutes drive. I'm saying, listen, if it's forty five minutes away, a church and live is worth a drive. Amen. 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 Nick, all your lives. And, um, so, so I spoke with him, and he said, look, the Lord's told me to open a church in Guildford in Surrey. He said, do you know where that is? I was like, well, yeah, we live in Surrey. Which he is said, we're going to do, a, we're gonna do um, <laughs> we're going to start with a healing service. Would you come along, give your testimony? Went along, gave your testimony, and we prayed for some people. We saw some healings. It, it was saw a guy yeah. healed of scoliosis, yeah. um, saw, saw some great stuff. And we, we were like, okay, well, cool. Um, and any pastor out there will know that when someone says, you're, this is an awesome church, you, this is now my church, you go, yeah, all right then. <laughs> but we, we just went back every week. There were like six people there, man. It, it was just a, a start-up little church in a, in a village hall, and we went back and diligently. We went back, we served, we put the chairs out, we made the tea. We, we just wanted to be there Everybody for people to, to yeah. have a taste. Yeah. of the truth Everybody of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, we just wanted to be there. We wanted to be a part yeah. of it. You know, it's exciting. And 
to, to, to have a, a real life experience of what the knowledge of God can do, what the word of God can do in your life. That's exciting. So we were like, yeah, come on, let's do this. And so we did that and we served and we served and we served. And then one day uh, Ben said, well, the Lord's telling me that, that you're going to pass this church. <laughs> Richard said, yeah. And I was like, no. <laughs> but I'm glad I listened to him. Hey, Thank God. <laughs> well, we <laughs> just, we, we want you to take that, faith and the anointing that God has used for you. I know that lots of people have been encouraged by you guys and Thanks thinking, God. man, if God can do this for this couple, he can do it for me. I want you to take your faith. Just pray a prayer of faith for the people watching it. We believe people are going to receive their healing right now. Oh yeah. Amen. Father, we thank you that your word is the truth. We thank you that you you did send Jesus and he did go to the cross and he did pay the price and we are healed by his stripes. And Father, right, this ain't even a prayer. I'm telling you right now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, you get up and you walk. Amen. You are healed. You're already healed. You were healed 2,000 years Amen. ago. The moment you got born again, you were healed. Amen. Get That sickness has come on your healing. Healing is already yours. We cast that sickness off. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it's all you need, it's all you ever will need. And Satan, you can do one right now in the name of Jesus. You're a loser, you've lost, you're a liar. Amen. Get off them right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Healing is here. Healing is here. Amen. 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 Healing is here. It's there, it's here, it's, it's wherever you are, healing's there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Man, what a great Amen. testimony. <laughs> And if any of you haven't seen his video, you need to watch it because at the end, after he tells all of this, it shows him bicycling through this rough terrain. And I tell He's you, Richard, <laughs> Richard is just completely healed by the grace Amen. of God. Amen. I love you guys. And I love to see we that. Love you. I'd love yeah, to yeah, see yeah. that you have taken the truth that you got, and now you are impacting many, many people's lives. So, Praise God. What a great Praise God. And thank you, man. Thank, thank you. you. I <laughs> love you guys. You're sitting in a bunker reading the word, and you, you change lives all over the world. Hey, Amen. Man. <laughs> you guys are a trophy of God's grace. We love you. God bless you. Love Thanks you. for joining us. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Amen. It